Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, let's tackle the big, <laughs> the big issues in baby things. So here's the thing. <laughs> here's your little disclaimer. I don't like disclaimers. That's the disclaimer. <laughs> um, honestly, adults should not need disclaimers for things, but because this is the internet, just because I don't like these things, just because I don't intend on purchasing these things, doesn't mean I'm crapping all over you. If you love them, if you want them, buy them by all means. It's your money. Do what you want with it. However, I will say that this video is more intended for the moms to be or maybe people shopping for a mom to be that are looking at these items and thinking it's really expensive. Do they really need it? Will we really use this? And I think that that's kind of what we need to focus on in general whenever we're buying baby things because it is so so tempting to buy every single little cute cool innovative thing that you see but i have watched a lot <laughs> a lot of videos um all about like newborn essentials and product regrets and all this and i feel like these are the things that i've learned that typically evoke a very like strong response. And these are things that I have come to the terms that I do not need. And I feel like nobody truly needs these things. If you want to buy them, by all means, go ahead and do it. But if you're like me and expecting mom, thinking like, okay, what do I need to budget for? What do I really need to buy? This video is for you. Um, and I think the thing to keep in mind also is that... <laughs> Babies have survived for literally millennia without these things. They have managed to survive without them. <laughs> now, I'm trying to strike a balance between like getting things that I want that will make my life easier or baby's life easier um, and then getting things that I know I really need versus getting everything that I want or everything that I think looks cool <laughs> because I do think that in a lot of ways... <laughs> No baby really needs these things or even more than what's on this list. But just something to keep in mind, like whenever you feel pressured by influencers or articles or whatever it is on the Internet or people in your real life telling you this is an essential, really think about it because literally nothing is an essential other than like milk and air and shelter. <laughs> literally nothing. So keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about any baby stuff that you're buying. Now, don't get me wrong. I am definitely a consumer. I love to shop. Um, so I'm not coming at it from like a minimalist standpoint or anything like that. Just a more realistic, this is real life, not perfect life that I'm portraying on the internet type of thing. If you like this video while you're watching, give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't like this video, then click right on out. Don't waste your time anymore. That's it. <laughs> so my first thing on this list, and I feel like it's the one thing. Yeah, literally the one thing on this list that everybody says that you need that you really don't need and that honestly I feel like the logic behind is very shaky <laughs> is the diaper genie. I said it. The diaper genie or any diaper pail in general. <sighs> Why? Why? Let, let me just explain this. If you don't know what a diaper genie is because I didn't know what one was. It is basically a garbage can that you can place a dirty diaper into. It has like a little hatch that you can put the diaper into where it's just contained. You push a button and then it drops the diaper down into the lower, like bigger portion of the trash can. And so there's no smell and blah, blah, blah. And then whenever you have to change the bag, it stinks to high heaven because you have like 50 dirty diapers all sitting in there just marinating in their own juices. Does that not just make no sense to anybody except me? Like, I just, I don't understand the logic behind that. Like, 
you're going to tell me, okay, well, it's not going to stink whenever you put the diaper in there. Well, number one, it's going to stink while I'm changing the diaper. It's, it's going to stink. So then just me opening up the pail, like, oh, opening up the pail, it's not going to stink because it's contained. But then whenever I have to change the pail, it's going to stink. I... I'm having trouble reconciling the logic with this. If you love your diaper genie, then go ahead and do you. But this is one expense that I just did. <laughs> I don't understand at all. At all. <laughs> so I'm not going to get a diaper genie. I have no desire to have one. Um, and what I plan on doing is just taking it to the garbage, putting it into the garbage can. Because guess what? Our garbage can has like one of those little lids on it. So you step on it, it opens up or whatever. You can't smell anything that's in the garbage can when the lid is closed because it's pretty snug on there. Um, and then, of course, whenever you open it up, just like with the diaper genie, it smells. So that's what we're going to do. We typically take our garbage down to the garage every single day anyway. So <laughs> how is that any different? And once it's in the garage, we're not going to smell it anyway. So... There you go. And also, what I don't understand about this as a last thing, so many people will tell you that they don't really use the nursery for like a good portion of the time and that you may be changing your diapers anywhere in the house. So how does that even help to have the diaper genie in the nursery? I mean, you would have to buy like five diaper genies to have them in every spot that you could possibly be changing a diaper in order to be able to use it. Otherwise, if you're changing a diaper, let's say downstairs, and your diaper genie is upstairs, you're changing the diaper downstairs because that's what you need to do right then, and it's convenient, and you don't want to take the baby upstairs. So then you're going to leave the baby downstairs and walk upstairs to put it in the diaper It makes no sense. It's a gimmick. The next one is one of, one of the two largest price items on this list and it is the fancy bassinets so i'm talking mainly about the snoo which is like twelve hundred dollars um and then they also have the halo one which is like 350 or something but basically any bassinet period i considered a bassinet not those two because that's outrageous and you don't need it but I considered a bassinet because I was like, well, maybe we can get away with not having a crib at first. I can get, you know, a bassinet or a play yard or something like that for the baby to sleep in. And then the more I read about it, the more it says that, you know, the baby is only going to fit inside those things, any sort of bassinet type thing for a very short period of time because of weight and height restrictions. So Whenever you're looking at an investment that costs that much and you're only going to use it for three, maybe four into five months, depending on how small your child is, that is ridiculous to me. Uh, like I was going to end up spending like a hundred or more on a play yard, you know, or 50 or more on a bassinet and still on top of that have to end up having a crib for the child to sleep in. I spent 130 on my crib, done, it converts into um, toddler bed and like a full size bed. So it's, it's something that we can use for years and years and years to come. Whereas that bassinet you're going to use for a few months. I just don't see the, the need and the logic in purchasing something that you're going to use for that short of a period of time. It just doesn't make fiscal sense to me. Um, I know that a lot of people love to have the bassinet right next to the bed and that that's why they get those. But honestly, how is it going to be any like better, you know, having it by you for the first three months, but then after that, you're going to have to put the kid somewhere else or you're going to have to buy a bigger item to put right next to your bed. I just don't get that. Now, I'm the type of person that, you know, I'm used to getting up, like, at a moment's notice to, like, figure things out on the road. You know, I'm used to my husband being like, hey, I need your help right now. Get up out of a dead sleep and help me. So I'm used to that. So getting out of bed to take care of the baby and go, like, 10 feet to the crib is not a big deal to me. 
if getting out of bed in the middle of the night is a deal breaker for you, well then maybe a bassinet would be okay. If you have the enormous amount of disposable income to do that with one of these outrageously priced bassinets. Next up is the Mamaru. <laughs> I've seen so many videos where people were like, all I wanted was the Mamaru. All I wanted was this. It was going to change my life, blah, 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 blah. Now, I think whenever it first came out, it was like 400 and now it's down to like maybe 350 or 300 or something like that. But still for a swing that really your child can only use for yet again, not that long of a time. And also so many people say that their babies just did not like it, that it didn't have enough motion to really calm the baby because it is kind of stationary. It doesn't like swing back and forth like this. It just has subtle movements. So <laughs> absolutely not. The swing that I have picked out, and I went back and forth on this a lot, is a swing slash bouncer combo. So it has like the swing and you can plug it in because I don't want to use batteries. Um, and it swings like this, but then also the actual cradle part that the baby is like sitting in for that can be removed from the swing and used as a bouncer seat that I can just like take around the house with me. It's a hundred bucks and that's what I'm going to go with because I feel like I'll get the most use out of that. And also I don't have to buy a swing plus a bouncer. Next up is the Docatot. A lot of people have very strong opinions about the Docatot and its safety and all this and that. I'm not concerned with that because I'm not buying it. Um, you know, definitely consider the safety concerns if you do plan on buying it. But for, I think it's around $300 for basically a cushion with like a bumper all around it. No. <laughs> Hard pass. Not happening. I know so many people love their Docatot. And safety concerns aside, I can see how you could feel like this is a great thing. But also, it, to me, it's kind of like, if you have the Docatot, do you really need like a bouncer? You know, because they're, they're effectively doing the same thing. They're lounging in it. You know, if you have the Docatot, do you need the boppy, you know, like all of these things kind of do the same thing. I know a lot of people use the Docatot to sleep in the bed with their baby, which I personally would not feel comfortable doing, period, because we do have dogs. And our dogs honestly have claimed <laughs> the bed. And I just don't want the risk of them like, you know, going and getting up too close to the baby and God forbid anything should happen or whatever. So he's sleeping in his own crib in our room. Um, but that's a personal decision that you have to make for yourself, but I wouldn't even use it in that capacity if I had it. It would just be to ferry him around the house and stick him wherever I'm at. And I don't really see the need in spending $300 for that. <laughs> but also it's one of those things where I've seen a lot of people saying that their child has like outgrown the size of the Docatot. And I know that you can open up the bottom and have the feet like stick out, but then what's the point of that again? You know, like, uh, I just, it, it seems like a very, very unnecessary expense in my opinion. So there's that. <laughs> Next up is something that I struggled with a lot. I really, really wanted, uh, mm. Fancy diaper bags. I'm talking like if you want like a Prada, a Gucci, a Louis Vuitton, uh, those are all just, I, I think that's for a very specific um, family, you know, like I feel like if, if that's not something that you could just go out and purchase just and not even have to think about the cost of it, you do not need it. This should never be on your wish list if you actually have to like budget for it. I just don't, if you're having to set aside or save up money to buy a diaper bag that is designer, I feel like in my personal opinion, that money could have and should have been spent on other things that the baby really could benefit from. Because at that point, you're just, you're just doing it as a status symbol. 
And I feel like status symbols are for people who can afford them and not people who have to struggle to afford them. I would struggle <laughs> to afford one of those um, designer uh, diaper bags. And we can buy everything that our baby needs. We could buy everything that we would want for him. But it's like that that's an expense that's even above above our price range <laughs> and then you have the ones that are like the instagram um popular brands um and they're like in the two to four hundred dollar range a lot of the time <sighs> and those number one i feel like a lot of them are very like big and bulky like the fawn design one or whatever it's called i'll put a picture right here but it's like a half circle like duffel bag thing i don't see the appeal in that at all that looks like having to carry like a, a an elephant on your side like that it's just so big it's so big I, I i just don't and i think a lot of people overstuff their diaper bags as well so once i do actually i have my diaper bag <laughs> once i actually get closer to my due date and i pack it and stuff I'll definitely do a video on that. Um, but the one that I really, really wanted before I even got pregnant, I saw it on Instagram and it's the Hap Design um, page carryall or page tote, whatever. I'll put a picture of it right here. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love the look of it. I love everything about it. But it's almost $200 and I was willing to pay it. I was like, that's no big deal. I can do it. You know, I want it. And then whenever I was sitting down, like, okay, I'm going to place the order. I, I had a heart to heart with myself. And I was like, do you really need a $200 diaper bag? And I was like, yeah, but I can use it even after it's no longer a diaper bag. I can use it as an overnight bag, blah, 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 blah. I, I could do all of those things. But honestly, I was just so caught up in, I want something cute. I want something this and that. And it just, I was lying to myself whenever I had convinced myself that I needed it because I really didn't. My one issue though with diaper bags in general is that a lot of them are backpack style nowadays and I can't stand it. I would rather lug everything around in a gray plastic Walmart bag than have to carry a backpack diaper bag. It's not my style. It's not my speed. It's not what I want. So that's why I convinced myself that I really wanted that page carryall. But I went back to the drawing board, looked at the internet again. So I found another one that is black with little camo accents. And I was like, this is perfect. I'm going to get it. 40 bucks is what I spent on it. And I feel like that is an appropriate price for something like that. I just, I cannot justify, and I don't think anyone should justify an expensive diaper bag if it's something that you have to budget for. Next up is the hatch baby changing pad thing that like weighs the baby and, and does all this stuff. Uh, that thing is like well over a hundred dollars. I think I can't remember the exact price, but I saw it and I was like, <laughs> somebody resuscitate me. What? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I can't. So here's the thing. Going back to the issue of everyone says, oh, you're going to be changing your baby wherever, you know. Okay, well, then you have one stationary changing station. And then you're you're only going to use that maybe 30% of the day. You're not even going to use it every single time. So then what's the point of having the all these bells and whistles on it? So... I don't get it for that. Um, I did see some mom saying that it's really good for if you are breastfeeding, you can feed them and then weigh them immediately after so that you know how much they drank, which I think is a good idea in theory. But again, you're going to know if your baby isn't getting enough nutrients, you know, like or 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 food. You're going to have doctor's appointments, you know, they're, they're going to weigh them or <laughs> honestly, you could just get a scale that that, you know, does not cost that much and just weighs them and doesn't do anything else if you're really that concerned about it. But you're going to know these things. And also, 
if this is really so necessary to be able to know how much you actually, how much they drank during a feeding, how did all these generations and generations of children manage to survive and thrive without the hatch baby changing pad situation? Think about that. Next up is a super fancy, expensive stroller. You guys, I have looked all across this great land for strollers. And <laughs> I get sticker shock every time. I will look at one and be like, that looks kind of cool. $850. Never mind. Back away and don't touch it. <laughs> like, I, I just... It's another one of those things where if you can buy something like that without having to think about the cost of it, without it affecting your budget at all, go for it. That's who that stroller is meant for. You know, nobody likes to hear that there are some things that are just for the wealthy to have, but that's the reality. Think about it in terms of long-term investment. Is this going to be something that you're going to use or be able to use for more than a couple of years? The one that I have picked out is the um, Evenflow Pivot Travel System thing. I'm watching the price on Amazon. Right now it's around $279, but I have seen it as low as $199 for certain colors. So I'm just kind of waiting for a good sale or a good deal. I'll put a picture of it right here, but it has the car seat. It has the ability to do the bassinet thing plus the toddler thing. Again, I mean, it's something that we'll probably be only able to use for two to three years. You know, I don't know how big toddlers get. Guys, I've never been around kids, so <laughs> it's all new to me. But um, I would rather have that at, let's say, 250 than have one of these, like, uh, up a baby strollers or whatever that's like 1200 freaking dollars and it does the same type of stuff you know like the stroller is not going to change your life it's not going to change your baby's life it is literally just a means of shuttling you from place to place while you're out and about not you shuttling the baby <laughs> actually wouldn't it be great if we could just get in it and it would just kind of self-propel. That would be amazing. That would be worth $1,200. But since it doesn't do that, it's not worth it. Just have a few more things here. I know that this video is just going on and on and on, but I'm just not the type of person that can make a five minute video that includes 10 things. in it. <laughs> so the next one, maybe another controversial one is the Owlet sock. Um, this is like $300. It is a sensor that goes on baby's foot and it will send you notifications whether they um, have an oxygen desaturation or whether they stop breathing or whatnot, whether they're having any sort of distress. I think it's a great idea, again, if this is in your budget without having to sacrifice for it. But honestly, a lot of people that have them say that they didn't even get it out to use for the first little while because they forgot about it or because they, you know, like were nervous about how it would work or whatever. Um, and a lot of people have said literally nothing has happened um, and it was kind of a waste, but it was, you know, peace of mind or whatever. Now, if it makes you feel better at night or whenever the baby is sleeping, that's fine. But honestly, I think that all of us are going to be sleep deprived in the beginning. I think that even if the baby is wearing that, you're still going to be concerned about whether he or she is alive, <laughs> to put it bluntly. You know, like I know sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I sit there and listen to see if I hear my husband and the dogs breathing because I'm like, did something happen? That's just who I am. And I feel like that's how a lot of us are whenever you are, you know, concerned about the people around you. So Again, it's one of those things where <laughs> up until like, when did it come out? Like less than five years ago. Um, somehow we all managed to keep our babies alive. Mostly for the most part, aside from catastrophic events, <laughs> we all managed to survive and thrive. So it's something that is not necessary. It, I would say it's not even a nicety. It's not even like nice to have. It's kind of like just a waste, you know, like because your parental instincts are going to kick in and you're going to be 
constantly on guard for these things and an app isn't going to necessarily help you be more at ease, not really, not deep down. So I don't feel like it's necessary. <laughs> Next up is a crib set. I see so many people on Instagram and YouTube whenever they do their nursery tours or their pictures of their nursery and blah, 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 blah. It's gorgeous. They're all stunning. I have FOMO every single time that I see them, but at the same time, all of these fancy crib setups with the blankets and the bumpers and the mobiles and blah, 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 all of this stuff it's not safe for baby to sleep with that. So why even buy it? I feel like if you want to have something pretty and frilly and nice and whatever, if you have a boy masculine or whatever, <laughs> whatever aesthetic you're going for, it's great to have that. But at the same time, if it's going to sit there completely unusable for like what the first year of life or something like that, um, why even buy it then? You know, like that's something that you could totally hold off on purchasing and purchase later whenever your child can actually sleep with those things without the concern of, um, SIDS. So I feel like that's very unnecessary. And also a lot of crib sets are very expensive. Um, I think the cheapest that I've seen is like $50 and it literally just had like a blanket and a pillow in it. <laughs> And it wasn't even that cute. So these can go well into the hundreds and multiple hundreds of dollars. And I just feel like it's not, it's not necessary at all since you literally cannot use these items for quite a while other than in cute pictures. And the last item, which I've kind of mentioned throughout is the changing table and the nursery just in general. So my main thing is the changing table because so many people have mentioned how they got a changing table and then almost never use it. And they almost never use it though because a lot of people don't even use their nursery in like the first year of life. Um, so for us, we're not doing a nursery at all. We have the, the room to do it. We have the space to do it. We just don't want to. That's that's an expense because I would like to set it up nicely and have it be his little room. But it's an, it's an expense that I don't have to shell out for right now. I can wait on that because realistically speaking, he's going to be sleeping in our room for probably the entire first year. The pediatric whatever it is association um, recommends at least six months to decrease the risk of SIDS. So... Um, I feel like at the very least, everyone should be probably doing that just for safety's sake, especially if you are investing in things like the Owlet and, you know, all of these like bassinets and all this stuff that's supposed to make it more safe. Like, well, he should be sleeping in your room anyway. He meaning mine, but whatever you have, <laughs> you know, but I just feel like the nursery in general is unnecessary in the first little while depending on how long you plan on, you know, sleeping in the same room, but also the changing table, because so many people have said that they just don't use it. You know, like they, they set it up. It looks pretty. It looks nice. Um, it's stocked with everything you would need. And then they still end up changing the baby wherever they can on the floor, on the bed, on the dining room table, wherever you can. So it's something that I feel like even if you are going to do a nursery, don't bother to buy a dedicated changing table piece of furniture. Get a dresser if you want a dresser. Personally, I don't like dressers, period. I have a vendetta against dressers. Um, or, you know, get get a little piece of furniture that can multifunction. Whereas a nursery changing table, that's pretty much what it is, you know. Um, it usually has little sides, you know, to prevent them from rolling over and stuff. It looks like a changing table. So it's not something that's going to easily repurpose. So I feel like it's pretty unnecessary um, for that. <laughs> so I think that that is my entire list of 10. This has gone on forever. Um, just food for thought, you know, like baby does not need any of these things. Baby does not need 99% of what we're told that they need, but just have a balance between what they need versus what you would like to have 
versus things that you're told that you should have and you really don't need them at all. And again, if you have the money to buy all of these things, then that is perfect. You go and do it. But if you are on a budget, really, really think about what you're spending your money on and where it is going whenever you are investing in baby, basically. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if nothing else, I hope that you were entertained by my theatrics about how much I can't stand most of these items. So I will catch you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.